Good afternoon. I'm John Falchicchio, Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development. And on behalf of Mayor Bowser, Happy New Year and welcome to this week's Recovery Weekly Check-In uh, with DEMPED. Uh, today we're going to talk about a topic uh, that I know some of you have heard about before and you might think that this is a rerun uh, from 2020. But I can assure you uh, that this is a new uh, show and we're excited because uh, we have a number of guests who are going to help you uh, navigate uh, PPP, the Paycheck Protection uh, Program, uh, which is a program from the federal government uh, with, that is administered uh, with the help of SBA. Uh, and it allows for businesses and organizations to access uh, money, a uh, loan, uh, which is a forgivable loan for uh, their uh, uh, coverage of their payroll. I'll get into it a little bit deeper with uh, Roderick Johnson first uh, from the SBA. Uh, but as you might have heard, uh, the Congress passed a $900 billion uh, stimulus bill, and part of that bill is $284 billion uh, for the Paycheck Protection Program. We we're excited in 2020 that uh, DC businesses and organizations uh, yielded over $2.2 billion in PPP loans. Uh, that means that those businesses were able to support uh, their employees and cover other expenses uh, with a loan program that is forgivable. Uh, and so what we really wanted to do was start off 2021 right uh, by talking to you about this opportunity. Uh, so with that, I wanna bring in Roderick Johnson. Uh, he is the, um, uh, excuse me, the Lender Relations Small Business Development Center Project Officer uh, with the U.S. Uh, Small Business Administration. Uh, so with that, to walk us through all of the different aspects of PPP and what we can expect uh, for the 2021 program, we'll turn it over to Mr. Johnson. And I think you might be muted on your phone line. And I see we're starting Thank off. you. There you go. Okay. There you go. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Roderick Johnson. I'm the Lender Relations Small Business Development Center Project Officer for the Washington Metropolitan District Office at the SBA. Our territory is Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia, and in Maryland, Prince George's, and Montgomery County. Now, what I'd like to start off saying is today is just January 5th. The actual stimulus package was signed by President Trump on December 27th at 5.30 p.m., as you know, most people were off work the last week of December, and so this is only the second day back in the office for most of us at the SBA. The stimulus package bill was a 5,600-page document that we are going through right now at the SBA, so I will not be able to give you the nitty-gritty details that are contained um, in that package. So what I'll be doing this afternoon is giving you a high-level overview of PPP 2.0. We would expect that by February 1st that we will have the um, standard operating procedures out for PPP 2.0, and we'll be, you know, informing the banks on how they are supposed to proceed, uh, business resources partners like SCORE and the SBDC and the Chambers of the chambers of commerce around the area so that um, people can get two things done. One, forgiveness, and then two, for those who have already applied for PPP the first time, then they also are eligible to apply the second time. And then for those that missed out the first time, they'll be able to um, apply this time. So with that, can we pull up the slides, please? And they are up. We can see them here. They're up. Okay, let's see, because I can't see them. So right now, so. PPP 2.0, uh, that slide is up, uh, and it talks about how uh, it'll reopen and be open through March 31, 2021. All right, so this is what I'll do, because I can't see it. So... What I'm going to do is go ahead and talk about what I know of it. Bear with me a minute. Okay. So here's what you need to know. The PPP is reopened through March 31st, 2021, 
with an additional $284 billion in funding. Now, businesses are eligible to receive a second forgivable loan if they, one, only employ 300 employees or less, they have used or will use the full amount of their first PPP, you have to be able to demonstrate at least a 25% reduction in the gross receipts of any quarter in 2020 compared to the same quarter in 2019. And of course, small business owners can also apply for an initial PPP. Now, under this bill, um, it will simplify the forgiveness process. So right now you have three um, forms. That's the 3508 form, which is the long form. You have the 3508 easy form, and you have the 3508 short form. Well, under the stimulus package, now you will have a new 3508 form where you can apply for forgiveness for loans of 150000 and below. So if you're thinking about applying for forgiveness right now, I would ask that you would hold off until February 1st when the new form will be rolled out to the banks and, and our resource partners, and then you can begin the forgiveness process. Also, um, under the new stimulus, it allows you, the borrower, to specify a covered period between eight weeks and 24 weeks. Frankly, I don't. I wouldn't understand why a business wouldn't choose the 24 weeks for your covered period. But under the bill, you can choose between eight weeks and 24 weeks under this round of PPP. This one is very important because I received a lot of phone calls about this. It repeals the requirement of deducting the idle advance grant from the PPP for loan forgiveness. So if you recall, if you receive the idle grant first, and let's just say it's $10,000, and you were approved for a $100,000 PPP loan under the former CARES Act, the $10,000 under the idle advance was supposed to be deducted from that PPP loan so that you would have a PPP loan of $90,000 to be forgiven. Now, under the old requirement, that $10,000 grant, if it wasn't deducted from the PPP when the bank did it, right now you would have a $10,000 um, loan that would be owed to the bank. Well, now, under this stimulus package, it repeals that requirement, okay? So now you won't be left with that $10,000 um, loan in the, in the um, example that I just gave. Now... Under the stimulus package, it also expands the eligible expenses that can, you can use the money for, supplier costs and costs associated with complying, that comply with health care and safety guidelines, all right? So PPP, PPE equipment can now be um, a part of what counts as the expenses under this. Also, businesses in the restaurant and hospitality industry are eligible to receive loans of 3.5 times the average monthly payroll rather than the 2.5 times as previous under um, the former CARES Act. Also, the stimulus package adds another $20 billion for idle advance grant. As you know before, the idle advance money had also run out, which was which was appropriated to $20 billion. That had run out. So now all you could do was get the idle um, loan. Also, eligible small businesses are able to receive additional funding if your first idle advance grant was under $10,000. So you can come back to the SBA and also um, reapply to get more money under the idle advance. Now, businesses are eligible to receive an idle advance grant if they, one, again, have 300 employees or less. The company is able to demonstrate at least a 30% reduction in gross receipts in any eight-week period between March 2nd, 2020, 
and December 31st, 2021. Also, let me stop right here and say that the idle loan has been extended now until December 31st, 2021, because it was set to expire, well, it actually expired as of December 31st, 2020. So now the idle loan has been actually moved down to expire on December 31st, 2021. And generally, you must be located in a low-income community as defined by the new market's tax credit. Okay? Now, here's something that I think that will make all business owners happy. This stimulus package reverses the IRS ruling to allow tax deductions for PPP forgiven expenses and clarifies that PPP loan forgiveness is not taxable income. Well, if you remember back on April 2nd, when the first interim ruling came out, it was understood that the loan forgiveness was not supposed to be a taxable event. However, it is. It was. And so now this provision allows for it not to be a taxable event. And now the PPP money that you use to pay expenses um, is now deductible. Okay? Also, it clarifies the adult advance grants that are not included in taxable income, which I mentioned earlier. It extends the FFCRA tax credits through March 31st of this year, and it extends the employee retention tax credit through July 31st of this year. And so for now, that's pretty much all I have on the new PPP 2.0. Well, okay. Roderick, thank you for coming back uh, to uh, the weekly check-in. Uh, this is really helpful. And a couple questions before we move on to Director Whitfield. Uh, so why do you think it's important for businesses to get ready uh, for PPP, even though it hasn't opened uh, again uh, just yet? All right, so we'll be coming out with the new regulations probably February 1. So now what you should be doing is you should have your, whether it's QuickBooks or whatever accounting software that you use, um, in order to, to prove that you've been impacted by COVID-19, and I'll pick, a, I'll pick a term. So you should have your 20, September 30, 2019, and your September 30, 2020, interim financials that show that you've had a 25% reduction in your income. So go ahead and start preparing for that now. Also, if you're going to um, go for another round or PPP 2.0, go ahead and start pulling out your 941s. If you're using a payroll service, pull out your 941s. If you're a single member LLC or sole proprietor or 1099 contractor, pull out your Schedule C's, your final Schedule C, okay, for 2019 so that you'll be able to submit that when you go for either your first round or your second round of PPP funds. Those are the documents right now that you need to start pulling together so that when the portals open probably on February 1st by the banks and the fintechs, then you're ready to apply. Keep in mind that it's $284 billion. If you remember the first round of PPP, that money went pretty quickly. It went in, what, under four weeks? So that was $535 billion. So this is $284 billion. So please, please get your documentation together so that as soon as the portals are opened by the banks and fintechs, you're ready to go to get some of that $284 billion. And uh, Roderick, that's why we're with you on that. We want our businesses to be PPP ready, uh, as we like to say. So I do have a question about the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Is that portal currently open? Can businesses currently access that portal and update uh, some of the changes that you saw here? That portal, all right, yes. The short answer is yes, that portal is open. Also, I don't know if many people realize this, but there is still $170 billion left in idle money. 
to get, okay? And under the stimulus package, loans can now go from $150,000, it can now go up to $2 million, okay? And that's key. So that's why you can go back and apply for idle for an idle loan. So this is what actually I would do right now because the idle portion, the, the, the portal is open. I would go on and apply for the idle advance, and I would also apply for the idle loan because the portal is open right now. And then when the PPP portal is open, of course, it should be on February 1st, then you'll be ready to go ahead and apply for your PPP. Frankly, the information that you're going to supply to the SBA for EIDL will pretty much be the same information that you're going to um, supply to the banks for the PPP, okay? But right now, right here today, you can apply for the EIDL loan up to $2 million and for the EIDL advance, which is $1,000 per employee, up to 10 employees to $10,000. So, uh, Roderick, the sign of a good presentation is that uh, some callers have already asked uh, where they can find this presentation. Uh, so we're going to make sure that your PowerPoint slides are presented and posted up on uh, coronavirus.dc.gov slash recovery uh, so that folks can go through these slides, uh, see how it applies to them, and then go visit uh, the sba.gov uh, website. Uh, and so, uh, Roderick, before I move on to Director Whitfield, one other question too. On the EIDL uh, Advance Grant uh, 2.0, I see that uh, you have to demonstrate, uh, for the Advance Grant, you have to demonstrate a 30% reduction in gross receipts in any eight week period between March 2nd, 2020 and December 31. Now that's important because some of our restaurants and retailers uh, at certain times of the year, as an example, yeah. during the holiday, they may have actually seen uh, better than expected uh, receipts. And so can you talk to us about kind of just emphasizing that point and how you see that uh, coming to fruition for folks? Well, I'm not so sure if you have restaurants, okay, that let's just say from April, well, let's put it this way. Um, there's been a lot of restrictions on eat-in dining, okay? And so, as we know, most of the restaurants make their money on eat-in dining. And then some of the restaurants, depending on where they're located throughout the DMV, were totally shut down, and then they were able to reopen. So, yeah, they may have, they may have had a spike in their revenue here toward the end of the year, but you can choose that, what, sept that's why I use September 30th. You can use that September 30th time frame. And I'm sure between September 30th, 2019 and September 30th, 2020, that they saw like a 30% dip in their revenue. So I'm not too concerned that for the holiday season, they may have seen a slight uptick. Um, it's important that you choose the, the, the if, if you will, the right period in which you would that you can show you were impacted. Yep. And I think it's just important for folks if they thought about the idle uh, advance grant uh, previously, uh, but decided not to do it for uh, one reason or the other, maybe going back to the sba.gov website uh, today really to see if that would work for you now, uh, given what you experienced through the whole of 2020. Uh, so we have uh, some callers who've called in, uh, also some folks looking uh, or viewing the program on social media. Uh, and so if you're on social media, if you use the hashtag DC Hope, we'll be able to get your comment or question. Uh, and then if you're on the phone line, uh, if you press zero now, uh, you can uh, make sure that you get into the queue uh, to uh, ask a question as well. So with that, I wanna bring in uh, Director Christy Whitfield. Uh, she's the Director of the Department of Small Local Business Development. Uh, really from the start of the pandemic, uh, I remember back in March, uh, Director Whitfield and I uh, recorded a video actually because uh, we wanted folks to know about the IDLE program and to go to the SBA website and to start that process. Uh, so with us today, Director Whitfield to talk about what the agency is doing in order to get folks prepared uh, for these federal programs. Uh, thanks for joining us, Director. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, that video seems like uh, eons ago. 
but the messages are the, still the same, which are that, you know, the Bowser administration and DC government and specifically the Department of Small and Local Business Development is here to help you and that we will get through this together. Um, I think we, through this various rounds of PPD, PPP, sorry, we've, we've learned a lot of things. Um, I think some hard lessons. Our businesses sometimes learned the hard way, the difference between a bank account and a banking relationship. You know, we saw our businesses really needing to scramble to find places to go to be able to apply. You know, you know, if you didn't really have, if your lender wasn't an SBA lender, or you didn't even know the difference between which lenders are SBA lenders. And so as we prepare for this next round, you know, the urgent, urgent message that I want people to hear from us, you know, it's really twofold. Start now. It doesn't matter if it's not ready. It doesn't matter if it's, it's not going to be open until the end of this month. Get ready now and get in line. So figure out who your lenders are. If you got, if you got one of these resources with a relationship with an SBA lender the first time, well, then great. The big first step is finished. If you tried and failed, well, then you have a moment to figure out. The SBA website has lists of SBA lenders that are there. Our local CDFIs, uh, Latino Economic Development Corporation, Washington Area, Area Community Investment Fund. Um, we have some guests from City First that will be with us today. Our local CDFIs are, are here to aggressively help make sure that we can continue to improve the statistics and the success rate for our businesses. We know that in the region, our businesses did a little bit better than you know, businesses across the country. But I think that we were still bumping around 20% of people getting this type of support. The federal resources are our biggest and best place to go to, you know, despite, despite the amazing work that our mayor has done and now the $100 million in bridge funding that DEMPED is currently in the process of dispersing, you know, it's not going to answer the need. And so we are here to make sure that you are doing the things that you should do today to be ready tomorrow. So Roderick had mentioned that the EDIL loans, you know, are currently open. So get in line, apply for it right now. And then the paperwork is probably not gonna be that different on the second round. If you tried on the first round and you have that paperwork together, then great. If you don't, or you had some glitches, then start again, start today. Just because he says it won't be done till the end of the month does not mean you don't wanna make sure, make sure you have a lender who is committed to working with you and that will get your application in in a timely fashion. Um, now, these application processes are you know, not as easy as applying for a credit card, we know this. And that what that means is we wanna make sure that you know where to go for help. The SBA has a hotline that is on their website. Um, the SBDCs, which are, you know, DSLBD has a relationship with them, but also a, an extension of the SBA can give you some personalized help to help you walk through your application. Um, DSLBD and our PTAC team, our Procurement Technical Assistance uh, Center, were really helpful for a lot of people that just had some questions about getting over the hurdle and getting their paperwork together. Because what we learned in the first round is if you put your paperwork in and something is wrong, you actually then get sent back. You don't sort of, you don't continue where you are, which is why this time for preparation is extremely critical. You know, our SBA colleague was talking about how quickly these uh, PPP um, loans or grants will probably move which means it's, you know, by the time you get back in line, it really may be too late. So some of the places to go for help are obvious. DSLBD, we are here to help you. Don't think you have to bring us your perfect self. Those of you who know me know I was a business owner and I ran it the real way, not the perfect way. So just bring us your real self and we can work with you from there. Our chambers are also actively available to help. The, the <laughs> Chamber of Commerce, the Black Chamber of Commerce, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, also there to help. Um, I was on the phone with the CBE today, CFO Services Group. They are an accounting company that has been providing pro bono help for people that wanted to be applying for these federal resources. So, you know, I think if you, if you have a question or if you want to know someplace else to look, again, call DSLBD 727-3900, select option seven. Um, 
And I want to say, you know, our main streets have also been really instrumental, district bridges in particular, but a lot of our main streets are really there to help you just get yourself together. So it's a lot of way of saying, like, you are not in this alone. We want to help you get as much of that federal money as we possibly can. Apply for all of it. Don't be conservative. In the first round, I actually talked to business owners who said, I know some businesses that are work worse off than I am. I don't want to compete with them. Apply for all of it. Get on the EDIL, get on the, the PPP, make sure you're in that line. And if you have a question or you need a little help, then reach out. But, I, but don't come to DSLBD first. Don't go to the chambers first. Get in line first. Make sure your lender is aware of you and committed to working with you first. And then come to us and help us cross the T's and dot the I's. Well, thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Director Woodfield. And I think it's uh, so important, the work that we're doing with all these organizations. It just really shows that there's somewhere, there's outlets, there's avenues to help. Uh, and so uh, one of the organizations that we've worked with uh, throughout the pandemic and even before and will do so after is uh, City First. Uh, so I wanted to bring in uh, the good folks from City First who've joined us uh, in order to talk to, uh, from the lender perspective, uh, how they think you should get ready for uh, PPP. So today is all about how you become PPP ready. And so we've got uh, some good folks from City First uh, Bank with us. And uh, the first one is uh, Miss Washington and Mr. Speck are the first two who are going to join us. Uh, so I'll go to uh, Miss Washington to uh, tell us a little bit about how they're preparing for it and how they think uh, you can be best prepared to come to your financial institution uh, in order to be PPP ready. Thank you. Um, my name is LaShawnya Washington. I'm the um, Vice President and Credit Risk Manager of City First Bank. And I also manage the um, Paycheck Protection Program on the um, application side now with Round 3 and also on the forgiveness. Um, Demstec and I, we work together to ensure that um, the borrowers get all of the support that they need to push their applications through as well as apply for forgiveness once the funds have been exhausted. Um, so I want to thank the mayor and the deputy mayor for bringing this um, very important matter um, for area businesses to light. And one of the ways that we feel that the borrowers can get ready for PPP is to start now, as Mr. Johnson indicated, um, ensuring that you have filed your federal tax returns um, if you're a business and also an individual because if you're a sole proprietor, um, the last round was calculated based on your Schedule C. Um, so that was a required document. So having your 2019 tax returns prepared um, is, is essential. And also ensuring that you have your proper payroll processing reports available um, to you and that um, through your payroll provider, ADP or Paytex or someone like that, they know what the CARES Act form is. All you have to do is ask them for that. They will ask you what your covered period is and then they'll be able to provide that to you within probably, I've been saying about 24 hours or so, they can provide that to you. And also, of course, your, your federal tax forms, your 941s. Uh, that is not um, the complete list of documents that your bank may require. Um, those are just some of the forms that are used to um, arrive at the calculation and therefore your loan amount. So um, just to prepare for that, um, I would start with that right away so that you're in line um, for those funds as soon as they are available. Um, we've been hearing mixed things just like five minutes before this call. Um, we heard that the portal could be open as early as Monday. Um, Mr. Johnson has said February 1st. So, again, the sooner you start on this, the better that you'll be. Um, so the, the payroll provider information is essentially important for us in calculating the, the amount. We have to know what you estimate your payroll to be. So that is probably the most important thing for you right now. So what are we doing? Um, the lenders, we are preparing for this. Uh, we are we plan to be working until the guidance has been released. Um, we are still awaiting the official guidance, but we're preparing our teams in-house for all hands so that we can work with you all. Um, you know, we last time um, we worked 16-hour days or so just to get as many applications processed as we could. We worked seven days a week to get those applications processed manually. But this time around, City First Bank and a lot of other financial um, organizations are automating the process. 
So if you receive a loan through City First Bank, just know that we have, are automating our application process this time. We will have a link available on our website, available for you to click and start the application process. If you have received a PPP loan from us before, we will definitely be sending information out to you um, to start that process again. Um, next slide, please. Okay. So um, Jill and I, we're going to kind of tag team this slide right here. So I'll start with the first one. The frequently asked questions that we get, we get a lot of questions coming into our uh, mailbox, and one of them um, is always, what's going to be different this round? So with round three, um, Mr. Johnson highlighted some of those things, but I think the most important thing to know is that uh, there is no real-time approval process this time around. As soon, so with the first two rounds, as soon as the information was received and you submitted all of your documents electronically, we submitted your application to the SBA and we received instantaneous approval. The SBA has indicated to us that they're not going to do that this time around, so I would ask that you be patient. Uh, we will be in constant contact with you on your application status, um, but it's going to be look very different this time around. Okay. Um, so, Jim, do you want to take the next one? Sure. The next question deals with whether you should go through the SBA or your local bank or CDFI in applying for the uh, PPP. And through the PPP, you could go directly through your financial institution. As Director Rickfield said, I think it's very critical that you identify um, your financial partner with care so that you have someone that's really going to be an advocate for you and work with you hand-to-hand uh, -to, -hand to make sure you get through the process. As we saw some of the other institutions, some of the larger ones, uh, that wasn't the case. So that's critical and definitely something you can be working on right now. So that definitely is a critical, important first step. Uh, the other thing I would say in terms of the SBA, as Mr. Johnson pointed out, there's a great wealth of information available on their website. So even though you're applying for the banks, I would definitely encourage you to become as familiar as possible with the program and use some of the great resources on the SBA website, even though you'll be applying directly through your financial institution. And, and um, some of the things that um, I hinted on already was some of the things that we're doing, but um, we're also monitoring those sites, the Treasury website, um, sba.gov. We have a forgiveness portal for lenders that we look at. So we're monitoring that several times a day to have, you know, the latest information to provide to you all. And we're also preparing correspondence to send out to our borrowers. So we are getting ready to help district and area residents, um, you know, as best as we can. Um, our application process is open to anyone in the district, Maryland, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Delaware, you know, our immediate service area. And again, it will be available, um, the link will be available, and I believe we can make that available to DEMPED as well. Want to take the next one, Tim? Jim, can you hear me? Do we lose? Hello? Can you hear me? Jim, do you want to take the next one? Maybe what we could do is, do you want to take the next one, Miss Washington? Uh, we might, oh, okay, I'm sorry. We'll see if we can get in touch with Jim. Um, yeah, so um, will the application, when will the application start? Um, we don't know uh, when, the, when the portal will officially be opened. Um, these are just word of mouth things we, we're hearing so far. But, again, it could be as early as Monday and it could be as late as um, February 1st. Um, but as soon as we plan, City First Bank, we plan to be operational as soon as the portal opens um, for, for the team, for, for the borrowers. Um, and when will round three, this is a question that we've gotten, when will the loans be approved and dispersed? So as soon as we get SBA approval, then we plan to disperse with, between 24 to 48 hours. We plan to um, disperse the money to the borrower. So on the next slide, um, we just wanted to talk uh, briefly about forgiveness. So forgiveness, the um, forgiveness application portal is, is open now. 
If the funds have been exhausted, we encourage borrowers to apply for forgiveness as soon as the funds have been exhausted. While you have your records up to date, um, you know, the number of employees, that are fresh in your records. Um, it just helps to expedite the process a little better. We found that when, um, you know, borrowers wait a little bit, that uh, they have a harder time pulling the records together. So um, we encourage you to do that. Um, and also contact your local bank if you feel like you've exhausted your funds and you have the documentation ready to prove that. Um, go ahead and apply for forgiveness. And we at City First Bank, we've automated that process of forgiveness. Um, we have a couple borrowers on, on the line now who've gone through the process from beginning to end and even have received their full forgiveness. Um, so, but yes, invitation emails are sent out electronically. And we are definitely going to duplicate that process on the application side for round three. Do you have any questions? Well, I guess my immediate question uh, before we bring in our other guests are uh, really so if you, uh, uh, for forgiveness, you should go back obviously to the institution where you took out the initial loan. Is that correct? Yes. And then also, uh, I think this is a good uh, time to bring up something that uh, Director Whitfield was talking about uh, before we started the program, was about the difference between having a bank account and a banking relationship. And I don't know uh, if, Ms. Washington, you want to talk about that a little bit, or we could let Director Whitfield uh, talk about that, but uh, the importance of that banking relationship. Yes, um, having a banking relationship is really critical. Um, for City First Bank, um, we as an organization, we prioritize the borrowers who've been with us before, whether it's a loan relationship or a deposit relationship, and most banks do that. Um, we've had, with the PPP process, some banks, they have only given PPP to existing customers. So, um, you know, or they prioritize the existing customers, so they may not have had time to get to non-borrowers. So I would encourage you to have a relationship with your deposit institution or establish one. It just makes it easier to navigate through, um, you know, any loan, whether it's, you know, 7A or SBA or unsecured credit card or what have you. When they know you, it's easier um, for them to, to lend to you and, you know, to trust you and know you as a customer. And also just to meet their fiduciary requirements as well. Uh, it just, I think it allows you to process faster and kind of assess faster if this is a, a good loan to make and, and move forward with it. Uh, Mr. Johnson, I think you might've had something too to raise. Uh, can we bring you into the conversation as well? No, just on the um, forgiveness piece of it, I uh, just going to remind people that there is another form coming out, the 35, there's going to be another 3508 form coming out for loans 150000 and below. So if you're just beginning the process of pulling your information together, um, you may want to wait a couple more weeks until the new form comes out and then apply for forgiveness. But if you're, you know, but if you're pressed to to um, apply, apply for forgiveness, and let's just say your loan is fifty thousand and below, then there's a thirty five oh eight short form that you can use. But in general, I probably would wait until the new form comes out, where it will cover loans from, you know, one dollar up to one hundred and fifty thousand to use to ask for forgiveness. That's really helpful to note. And so when you mentioned that there's a new form coming out, is it more permissible? The uses are more permissible? It seemed like that might be the case from what you laid out in your presentation. All right, is it more? Uh, permissible, is there, are there more uses that are permissible? Oh, in order yes. to achieve so, for example, there's P, you can now include PP, E as one of the um, ex expenses that you can use the PPP money for. Yeah. And I know folks have had to go into uh, their, you know, cash registers, go into their accounts to make those important purchases. So I know that is something that uh, if that is now going to be an eligible uh, allowance or a allowable use, 
uh, that is uh, definitely something maybe worth waiting for uh, as well. But I'll go to Director Whitfield, uh, who's going to bring in a couple of businesses who've actually navigated uh, PPP uh, in the 2020 rounds. And so uh, with that, Director Whitfield. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, you know, it's easy enough for government officials to tell you the things that you should be doing, but sometimes you want to hear it from someone who's really been through it. And so the Deputy Mayor has invited some businesses to come and talk about their actual experiences with PPP and maybe to get some advice from some, some successful recipients of these federal resources. So here with us in our studio, are we calling this a studio, Deputy Mayor? Here in our studio here sure. today, um, the old, old city council chambers, um, Anthony Hales, who is the uh, president and CEO of Bain LLC. So we're gonna ask you to give a little bit of your background and then talk about your business, of course, because we want to talk about what your business is, in case anybody needs to buy something from you, and then talk about your experience with the PPP. Hey, yes, Anthony Hells Jr. I am um, Anthony Hells Jr. I've been here in the district about 11 years now, uh, formerly worked in the federal government at the Department of Education before starting a business. Uh, Bain LLC specializes in market research, um, as our, our primary offering here in the city. Um, with the PPP, yes, we did EDIL, EIDL and PPP in the 2020 rounds. It was, the process is really about having your records together. If you have your records together and your paperwork in order, the process um, can run pretty smooth, still tedious, but run smooth. If you are in the process where you have to try to organize things, then it can become more of a headache. But the biggest thing is really having your paperwork together. I, I will give you that advice. All right, well, we'll bring in our other business owners and then maybe have a, a larger conversation. Um, virtually joining us today is a, a friend and CBE, Cora, um, Cora Williams, the owner and CEO of uh, Ideal Electric. Good afternoon, Ms. Williams. Good afternoon, everyone. So, Ms. Williams, tell us a little bit about Ideal Electric. I know you're a long time, um, a long time CBE and district business. And can you talk a little bit about your experience with the uh, with the the SBA resources, either the EDIL or the PPP? Certainly, uh, I I think for the most part, the PPP uh, application process to us was was very seamless, and primarily because of our long term relationship with City First Bank and our Ernst Wow chief lending officer who assisted me personally. So um, we provided her with all of the information that uh, was required. And um, shortly after that, we were told that it had been approved. And shortly after that, we received the funds. Uh, it was very seamless. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, I think the main thing is to have the information that they need. If you have the information that is required, your banker can take care of it very quickly. At least I would certainly recommend City First because they did it for me. Uh, thank you, Ms. Williams. And then last but not least, we have Odara Jeter, who's the property manager, or, I mean, who's the CEO of property management uh, sale in the sole proprietor. Welcome, welcome, Ms. Uh, Ms. Jeter. Uh-oh, I think you're muted. So tell us a little yeah, bit about you. Yeah, I didn't realize you. I had you guys muted. Sorry about that. Um, thank you uh, for having me on this call. Um, I think this is a very important um, call to have and try to just gear up for um, the next rollout that's going to happen. Um, I am a sole proprietor. I am a real estate professional working out of um, D.C., Maryland, Philadelphia, um, I actually uh, found out, obviously, about the PPP and IDLE, um, along with everyone else. And once I found out about it um, through HEP Construction, um, I was tied into the relationship with City First, who um, did help me uh, obtain the PPP. And I was second, third, fourth, the notion that a lot of the other people on the phone call have already said in reference to making sure it's very important that you have a relationship with the bank as opposed to just being a depositor or having a bank account that does make a difference, like having a tangible person to speak to who you have a relationship with. If you don't have that now, um, you have a little, you know, time to get that in place. And aside from that, really understanding what documents are going to be required to be submitted and put those in place now 
Um, so once everything unrolls, you can literally have that relationship and release those documents to really get you in line and in queue. And just stay in contact with your relationship personnel at your respective financial institution. Um, it is tedious. Uh, it is some, you know, a robust amount of information that you have to have together. But what I can say, if you have it and you're able to, you know, submit it, the process is fairly uh, streamlined. And for our uh, businesses that have joined us, uh, have you started the forgiveness process? And uh, have you uh, gotten through that? Or how have you kind of navigated the forgiveness process for PPP? This is no. Cora Williams. Oh, sorry. Oh, you can go ahead. I, I can go after. Um, so for the forgiveness process, um, once City First reached out to me to let us know that the forgiveness portion uh, was now open, there's um, a easy form that I was able to complete, which was easy, <laughs> not to sound redundant, but, um, you know, you submitted what was necessary on how, um, you know, where you applied those funds that you received. And within a short amount of time, I was able to get confirmation that not only did they receive my paperwork, but they also, um, you know, submitted it to the SBA to go in for forgiveness. And literally, after coming back from a holiday and checking my mail, I literally got my forgiveness signed off paperwork that it was forgiven and canceled. So that was a great New Year gift. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Williams? Uh, I would literally say ditto for the most part because um, ours has been, our, our, our um, PPP has been uh, forgiven the entire amount, and uh, pretty much the same thing as the previous speaker said. We submitted the documents that were required, and shortly thereafter, we received notification that it had been forgiven uh, in full. We submitted our paperwork, I want to say, uh, mid-November. We have not been updated yet. The, the process to apply for forgiveness was very easy. I will say we actually had to find a new bank for our PPP loan because our primary bank uh, was hesitant on participating in the program and they, they were moved very slow. Uh, but the bank we did go with, the process was automated and it was it was very easy to submit just payroll and other information. Great. Well, I uh, want to open it up to uh, uh, some of our callers and some folks who've been following on social media uh, to join the conversation. So I'm going to ask all of our guests to get ready to jump in and help us uh, with the questions uh, and answers uh, for this session. Uh, and actually, we have a caller, uh, Ms. Lacoste, uh, who had called in about uh, uh, seeking confirmation about uh, the SBA loan program. Uh, Ms. Lacoste, are you with us? Hello, yes, thank you. All this information is so great. Thank you for all of your time and efforts for us. Um, I just have a question about the new PPP, you know, uh, uh, number two, um, um, SBA loans, six months of, SBA, of old SBA loans being paid. Is that true that this will also be available in round two? Are you referring to the debt relief portion of the, the CARES Act where yes. you can, okay. For the no, SBA, in, in round one, it was SBA loan. Six months of six months of payments were made by SBA, and I understand and that, that it also exists in round two. Is that true? That's primarily for new seven A, five hundred four, and micro loans that that's being done for. So yes, that is um, still available under PPP two point oh. Great. Well, thank you for calling in. And uh, next question came from uh, Twitter. Uh, again, if you're on social media, you want to join the conversation, use hashtag DC Hope, uh, and that'll help us find it. So on Twitter, a uh, question was asked about the bridge fund uh, and whether uh, those grants will be expanded uh, to businesses that don't fit in the existing framework. Uh, and uh, so later this month, we have one more uh, round uh, of uh, application to open, and that's for businesses uh, that are not venues uh, that support the entertainment industry. So think of like event planners, uh, photographers, uh, those who support uh, the event uh, industry. Uh, that round will open on January 11th. Uh, so look for more information on the uh, recovery.dc.gov, or excuse me, coronavirus.dc.gov slash recovery page uh, in order to find more information 
uh, about that. And so I'll go to another caller uh, who's going to uh, ask uh, for SVA help again. Uh, and this is Ms. Smith. Uh, Ms. Smith, uh, can you hear us? Uh, Ms. Smith, your line's open. Hi, my question um, to the director, he spoke about the current EIDL application being open um, for advancement. If you go online right now, it does still say that there is no funding for advancement. Uh, my second question is for those who have applied last year and received less than the 10000 due to lack of funding, will, be, will we be required to apply again um, in order to get the difference, or will SBA simply notify us about that? Now, you have to apply again to get the difference. And then in terms of the um, advance, um, we were told it was open. So I'm glad you gave me that feedback so I can go back and let them know that um, it's not open for the advance. But we were told internally that it was supposed to be open for the advance. All right. So we'll make sure that we also update our website. Yep put on social media when we have confirmation about that uh, being open. So we'll coordinate with Mr. Johnson to help uh, get the word out. Uh, next uh, question, I think this might be in the same realm, but this is from uh, Tony from the Italian Kitchen. Uh, Tony, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Great. Tony, you had a question about the uh, loan program as well. Uh, my question, first and foremost, uh, I want to say thank you to everyone. Um, the information sessions have, are always um, so helpful. So first and foremost, thank you, everyone, for that. Uh, my question was with regards to the EIDL loan. Um, we did apply for the initial loan. Uh, unfortunately, we've exhausted it. Um, so my question is, are we able to go back um, to try to get additional funds? Yes, you can go back and get additional funds up to $2 million. Great. Uh, next caller uh, is actually uh, Marcus uh, in Ward 4, uh, who has a question about uh, PPP. Uh, Marcus, can you hear us? Yes. Uh, I just want to start off by saying thank you, everybody, for the information. This is invaluable and uh, going to help a lot of people in the process. So I have several questions, so I'll just kind of begin chronologically. Is it still too late to apply for the first round of funding? I know the gentleman mentioned there was still $184 billion roughly from the first round of funding. Uh, Mr. Johnson. For the Johnson. idle, you're talking about for the idle, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. There's still plenty of funding, plenty of money left for idle, so you can apply. Do those qualifications differ from what the, the, the regular PPP? It was two and a half times your cost of goods sold if you have cost of goods sold. If not cost of goods sold, then it's two and a half times your net profit. If, you, if you're a single member LLC, um, 1099 contractor or sole proprietor. And then my second question is, I'll just lump the last two questions in together. Is there a crosswalk for this breadth of information that's being disseminated today? Because I've been trying to take notes, and um, a crosswalk would be really easy as far as, like, the cradle-to-the-grave process of this entire thing and, like, the multiple routes you could take or if something or does or do not, does not apply to you. All right. So there are two different – so we have two different loan programs, right? So the PPP – as you know, you apply to your local bank or fintech. So that's one process. The other process is idle, where you just go directly on to the SBA.gov website under idle, and it'll walk you through, you know, the documents and things that, that you need. But you can go to, to www.treasury.gov or SBA.gov, and actually either one of those websites um, should be able to help walk you through the things that you need um, to submit to either the bank for the PPP or for idle. Great. And I think also uh, City First Bank, I saw a document that you all had put together for all of the items that need to be uh, uh, 
collected and gathered uh, to apply for the PPP loan. Uh, can you uh, make sure that DEMPED has that and we could uh, share that? Because I know you alluded to uh, some of the documents you need, but the list is a little bit more uh, comprehensive than that. Uh, do you want to talk through that, Ms. Washington? Sure, yes, because um, the second round is, is a little uh, different. Uh, we are adjusting that list, and we will send it out to Dem's head for posting, and we will also have it available on our website, um, as well as um, email it out to all of our existing borrowers. So we will make that available. Fantastic. So we'll make sure we get that information up on the coronavirus.dc.gov uh, slash recovery page. Uh, we did have a couple other questions okay. from social media. And actually, Mr. Johnson, you might be able to help with this one too. Uh, where do people find uh, uh, information for the Save Our Stages Act and how that uh, will be implemented? This is the uh, uh, program for the uh, entertainment venues. Yeah, all right. So as I stated at the beginning of the, the presentation, the Act is 5,600 pages. Today is just January 5th, and we are still, you know, going through the documentation so that we can get, you know, know what the nuances are for the bill that was just passed. So at this point, although I know that exists, um, I don't know at this point in time the mechanics of, you know, how it works. And so you'll have to give us, you know, a week or so to, to fully digest, you know, the whole bill. And I can imagine, uh, Mr. Johnson, if you need a forum to talk about uh, the, uh, that part of it, uh, we'll be happy to host you again uh, in the coming weeks to talk about uh, that program, because I know there's a lot of uh, uh, entities, uh, organizations in the district uh, that are interested in that venue-related uh, relief as well. Yes, we've been receiving calls already for the last two days just about that, and you know, they've gone to our district director, the deputy district director, myself, asking, you know, the questions about it. And we just don't know right now because we're still trying to digest the whole bill. Yeah. And I guess that's a good question, too, for our small business owners. How have you navigated kind of all the resources that are out there? Uh, because I know there's a lot that gets put in front of you. And how do you navigate kind of what you've taken advantage of and what you maybe just said, I'm going to pass on that? All right. So, what in terms of what oh, people can oh, no, I meant that access? For, I actually meant that for the small business owners, kind of how they've kind of assessed what they've kind of taken advantage of and what they've passed on. So, I don't know, uh, Anthony, if you had any kind of feedback on that. Yes, I, I, I do recommend taking some time, an hour or two, and sit down and just reading through the different opportunities that are available and just really assessing A, what can we, what are we most competitive to get? Because, you know, everyone's time is limited. And then B, what would be most advantageous to us if we get it? Uh, so I do recommend just taking some time and reading through resources and starting with your trusted partners first with the city resources and then resources that your bank uh, may put out as well. And you took advantage of PPP. Were there other programs that you were able to take advantage of? I did take advantage of the, the grant program that your office made available last summer, so uh, thank you. Um, we, we did apply for that. We, we did uh, work with WACF. Uh, WACF got us uh, another um, loan that came through the SBA program as well. Um, I will say thank you. And also, one last piece of advice I will give, is particularly for small businesses, is um, even if you have a bank relationship, you may just want to even look at alternative banks just in case. One thing is with PPP, when they expanded to non-traditional lenders, it brought a lot of more options to the marketplace. So have a backup option as well. And I know uh, Director Whitfield was telling me earlier about the difference between uh, an account and a relationship. I told her that I'm a big fan of Alicia Keys. Uh, I've downloaded her music. I follow her on Instagram. Is that an account or is that a relationship? That's just an account, Deputy Mayor. Okay, that's just an account. <laughs> that's just an account. Okay, Director. <laughs> so, uh, one hello, this is Cora. Oh. Oh. And um, my answer to that question would be 
is that we look at everything that we may be eligible for. We have a sophisticated team that does that, and then we make we make decisions based upon that. I wasn't interested in trying to borrow any money because we have a substantial line of credit with City First. So that's where we wanted to try to keep everything definitely with them. So we went after everything that we could qualify for. Um, and that I want to, pulling off of that ex great example, I want to say that I know in the first round of these SBA resources that some things were changing. I mean, the SBA really built this airplane in the air. And I heard from some businesses who on the first round, you know, stopped applying for the EDIL because they had heard it ran out. And then a second round came and they maybe had missed that opportunity. Or they, you know, had heard something from their first lender saying, I'm not doing this. And then again, thought it wasn't going to work out for them. I think that this second round will be smoother. You know, don't let a, a defeatist attitude stop you from going for every resource that's there. You know, nothing beats a failure but a try. And so let's make sure we get the applications in, you know, ask for as much as you can possibly get and then deal with what the re result is as opposed to applying for zero and getting it. Great. And um, on that, I think that uh, we had mentioned earlier, we got a couple of questions on social media about the pro bono accounting opportunity. Uh, is that something that the chambers had worked on? Uh, uh, is, no, this was the um, CFO Services Group is a, is a local accounting firm and they are a good dedicated CBE partner in the city and they realized that businesses needed help and this was something that they are willing to offer for free. Now the, the caveat there was that if your books are in a, a state of extreme disarray that they are gonna, you know, you can't just come and have them do all your bookkeeping and get everything together. But, um, you know, so th there are a lot of resources and as, as we hear more resources and if you're listening and you're another accounting firm and you offer that, let us know and we'll amplify that too. You know, when then the chambers did a lot of work with technical assistance, helping people get, get things together. Um, and I believe they are going to do that again. I know that the downtown DC bid is interested in helping with technical assistance. So the bids, the main streets, the chambers, you know, of course, DSLBD, the Bowser administration, there are a million ways to get that help. But again, first go to your source, make sure you're in line and then get help while you're in line so you don't miss this opportunity. No, it's great advice. And is there a, so for the a group that was performing the pro bono service, are they still doing that or is that? They are, they, they are, are, and they intend to do it for the second round too. Okay, and how can folks access that? Um, CFO Services Group, so I would say look for them online. I don't have their, okay. I think their Twitter is CF, C, CFO Services G-R-O-U, no, no P. But um, again, do a little web search, CFO Services Group. And what we'll do is we'll be sure to put that up on the website mm -hmm. as well. So we have uh, coronavirus.dc.gov. Uh, the recovery page is where you can find all this information. Uh, we're also getting ready to launch uh, uh, our own site just on PPP, uh, which is going to be pppready.com. Uh, it's something that the district is so intent on making sure that you access PPP uh, that we actually captured that domain. Uh, in order to get that information uh, to our businesses and other organizations that are eligible for PPP. Uh, so with that, I want to just uh, ask Mr. Johnson if he's got any parting advice uh, as we bring today's session to a close. All right. There's one more program that I wanted to mention that hasn't been mentioned, and that's the Federal Reserve Bank Main Street Lending Program. That was actually funded to the tune of $600 billion dollars. It's my understanding that it's about $550 billion left in the program. However, the minimum loan amount is $100,000. The interest rate is up to 4.25%. Um, it starts as low as 2.25, up to 4.25, depending on the risk profile of the company. Now, it is full underwriting. So it's just like going to a bank and applying for a loan. And it's a five-year loan. But here's the difference. So in year one and two, you're only making an interest-only payment. In years three and four, you're making a 30% principal curtailment on the loan balance. And then in year five, the loan balloons and you have to pay it off, okay? But they're typically going to take a blanket lien on the business assets of the company. 
If you have an idle loan, the SBA will subordinate to the Federal Reserve Bank's loan. And actually, it's the bank's loan because the bank is actually making the loan. And I think it's just another loan program that's available for people to take advantage of. So Bank of America, Wells Fargo, um, United Bank, J.P. Morgan, and I think it's Freedom Bank over um, off around 123, what is that, Vienna, in Vienna, um, they're the banks that are actually participating in this loan program. In terms of idle, go ahead and apply. You can. There's still a lot of money left in the idle loan program, and so go ahead and apply. I'm going to find out about the idle advance portal because I was told that was open, so I will get back to you and, and give you the latest information on that. So I'll call you tomorrow and let you know what's going on with that. For PPP, um, just give the SBA time. We're supposed to have 24 days to actually digest this bill, make it a part of our standard operating procedure, and then roll it out to all the banks and our resource partners. So I just ask that you give us time to do that. But start preparing now to prepare for this round of PPP so that when the um, gates open, then you're ready to go. Because I can tell you at $284 billion, um, you know, at one time I couldn't even form my lips to say that and just let it roll off the tongue. But now when we're talking about, you know, trillions of dollars, you know, which $284 billion? But my point is the money will go fast. So go ahead and prepare now. And when, you know, the portal's open, you're ready to go so that you can get a piece of the money. Well, I want to thank uh, you for joining us, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, Director Whitfield, all of our uh, friends from the uh, City First Bank, as well as uh, our small business owners for joining us today. Uh, we had a great discussion about PPP. We want to make sure that uh, you, your business, your organization is ready for PPP. Uh, that's why we're talking about PPP ready uh, throughout uh, the month of January in order to emphasize that. Uh, we do this check-in every week, so we ask that you join us again next Tuesday at 4 p.m., uh, and DEMPED will have a whole new lineup of folks who will talk about how they're navigating the pandemic. Uh, we know this is a trying time, uh, especially trying this week as we uh, digest all the news that is out there. Uh, so we ask you that uh, stay uh, committed to the work that you're doing and to make sure that you take advantage of all these opportunities. Uh, we'll continue to update and put more information on coronavirus.dc.gov. Uh, so be sure to uh, check out the recovery section of that website uh, and make sure that we'll uh, update that uh, regularly. Uh, so with that, we ask you to uh, continue uh, the work that you're doing. We appreciate it on the behalf of the Mayor Bowser. Uh, we're all in this together uh, and we'll all get through this together. Thank you and be safe.